Read him out. The big goal. Says A. It's a brilliant goal. His first for Crystal Palace. Steve, how do you reflect on the season so far? Good so far. Very positive. Obviously, we got off to a good start. You know, we haven't got off to many good starts, so um, I don't know what it is now, second best or best start we've had to a season. So obviously we've got to be very happy with that. Nice going into an international break off the back of a thumping of Leeds, wasn't it? Yes, it was. But I mean, we need to be realistic as we always are internally. It was a great performance. We got the rub of the green a little bit that we didn't get in the Wolves performance before. You know, we, we, we know that we had a subpar 20 odd minutes in the, in the Wolves game, but that happens in, in, in games. We look at the whole period and the whole period we're very happy, very happy with performances. I think what I was delighted to see in the Leeds game was we matched them for energy. So we matched them for energy, you know, then our quality showed. And of course, great to see as they get a, a, you know, a goal and, and obviously a great delivery from the corner. So all around it was a good, good result to go into, give us a very pleasant two weeks. You made a sizeable investment in the squad in the summer. You mentioned Ebbs, but obviously Nathaniel, Michi on loan. Jack and, and Nathan as well. Are you pleased with the direction of travel and, and where the squad's at at the moment? No secret, we've, we, we've got work to do. You know, the average age doesn't win or lose you games, but obviously there's a time limit on, 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 on footballers in terms of physical ability to perform. So, you know, we're acutely aware that we've got to make smart decisions, but also, you know, we need experience and we need that knowledge and know-how and on the Leeds game, the seven of the players on the bench were internationals. It's, it's, I think it's a fantastic squad. It's a fantastic group of people. We're coaching really well, they're managed well. We're obviously very happy with what we've got. We need to look forward to the summer, maybe January, maybe the summer, and continue the work we did this summer. Um, continue to be targeted in our approach. Make sure that everybody's on the same page. You know, so me, the manager, Dougie, are all working to the same goal, try and get things done as quickly and as, and, and as efficiently as we can and give the players time to, to bed in so that they can come in without pressure on them to, to, to have an instant impact, but they can learn the things that they need to learn, the way that we play, the way that we work. So that's, that's what we aim to try and do and, and hopefully we can do that. But obviously the market is, it's very difficult and probably been made more difficult with the changes, with the, with the work permit changes because up to now we knew whether a player would qualify. Now with the system we've got, we only know that probably very expensive talent from certain leagues will qualify. Everything else has to be sense checked against the point system. So we've got to look at those challenges and, and see what we can make work for us. So those challenges are on top of the wider economic situation. Just how, how much has the global pandemic affected the club's finances? For most of the mid-range Premier League clubs, it would, it, would, it would be the same. It's a gross of around 26 million. There's some savings on that. That's the gross number that we're forecasting. It, it may improve slightly if we can get some fans back. Obviously for the bigger clubs, it's a, you know, it's a lot more money as well. So it, it, it hasn't had any significant impact. We've been well supported by the broadcasters in the main. And obviously you could see in France, where the situation is, is, is much worse. They've got problems with their broadcast contracts and on top of no supporters, on top of curtailing their season last year. So being able to play on last season was a significant positive. But obviously, as with everybody, you know, there's, 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 there's financial pain. Well, I think we all hope now with the vaccine that we're, we're on the upward curve. And it, it, obviously it all now seems down to how fast we can roll this vaccine out and in what areas does it have the most impact so we can get back to normal life as, as, or, or near normal life as, as quickly as possible? And how that will impact us getting spectators back in the stadium, I don't know, but I would be hopeful we could have at least some spectators back. As with this whole, this thing being the same for everybody, it's a weird roller coaster of first of October, we thought we'd have fans back. And then obviously with the pickup in the infections again, then we understand it was difficult. W whether it was safe or not, optically, it would be very difficult to have 5,000, 6,000 people coming to our stadium when we were heading towards a more restrictive issues everywhere else. If we just cast our minds back, I know fans will be interested in the decision-making process to get to the point of season tickets going on sale in September. How do you reflect on that? I know it was tough decisions for every club. Can you explain the route and where we ended up where we did? So 
it, I still think, and in light of the vaccine, I do think it was the, it was the right choice. So we thought that we would have spectators back on the 1st of October. It was looking like for Sellers Park that would be about 6,000 spectators. So we toyed with the idea of, of a ballot system and people paying towards a ballot. Of course, the problem with that is if you get to the point where people haven't really committed to, to, to coming to football, they paid a small amount of money to enter a ballot, what would then happen, we envisaged, would be we would pull the 6,000 names and 1,000 couldn't make it or didn't want to go. Or just an enormous logistical process, even for a club our size, to then contact another 1,000 people and say, oh, can you, can you make it? So we, we decided the best choice was to go with the season tickets, put them on sale. We were absolutely blown away by how well people supported that. Obviously, there had to be something, an imperative to do that, save your seat or all the normal uh, reasons. What's important now is we start refunding the money as quickly as possible to people. So we've had a period of games that obviously people haven't been able to attend. We'll refund the money for those with the same refund options that we had before. And I would just say that the last seven games last year, uh, hundreds of fans in the quantities of hundreds of thousands of pounds donated money to the academy or to the foundation, which was absolutely incredible. And, and, and they will be looked after, certainly the academy founder members will be looked after and, and, and are greatly thanked by me and the club and will make sure there's, there's something very significant that they pay for in the, in, the, in the academy that helps the boys. So the same refund options will exist as we go through. People want to take the money back, that's absolutely their prerogative. They'll be able to use it as a credit, they'll be able to invest it in the academy if they want, they'll be able to give it to the foundation. And that will happen fairly soon in the next couple of weeks and we'll do that on a rolling basis. But of course now I'm, I'm very hopeful that we will be able to get some fans in the stadium. Let's say it was back to the original 6,000. With 12,000 people that have paid, you know, that's every other game somebody can, can come to. Of course, we'll refund them for the one that they can't. If there are more fans allowed in the stadium, then fantastic. So we are hopeful that fans will be allowed. And, and, and looking back on it, you know, we think with the rolling refunds, making sure we get money back to people as quickly as possible, including any interest payments they've paid. So it, I think it's in, in the end, it will work out the least worst system we, 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 we could come up with. Let's talk about one of the real positives that's, that's come out of the last six months, and that's the investment that's continued apace at the academy. How do you feel when you go there at the moment? Oh, it's just it, outside of... of, of family and with everything that's going on it's, it's just the best thing in my life I mean it's fantastic it's fantastic for everybody inside the club to see that progress I hope it's fantastic for the supporters I mean this is something that will stand the club in good stead for the next hundred years I mean it's it's just an amazing facility I think um, everybody that's involved in it has done an outstanding job and me and the shareholders of the club have, have obviously had to dip into our own resources to keep it going because of the because of the losses. But everybody's been unbelievably supportive of that. Josh and David have been supportive of it, other smaller shareholders we've got. Everybody understands that local players, local talent, the lifeblood of the football club. But not only that, what we can do in the community with this facility is just astounding. One of the things when we went for planning that we didn't make a negotiating chip was community use. And, you know, the 3G pitch, the indoor pitch, Obviously, they're a boon because, you know, there's no maintenance issue as such, really, as there is with normal pitches. Outside of the use that we need for the academy, we will, you know, we're already getting schools down every evening. It gives us a chance to look at players, of course, but it's a fantastic facility for, 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 for those boys and girls. For the foundation, the disabled teams, we've got much more, many more classrooms, so we can educate not just the boys in the academy, but we're looking at evening schools and things where we can reach out into the community. We help with all the foundation's diversionary tactics, you know, all of the kind of clubs and football activities and, and, and educational activities that we can use to divert people out of doing things that maybe are not as good for them and, and as good for them growing up. So we really want to use it to reach out for the people of, of South London. And it's a beacon. I don't think there'll be a better academy, facilities-wise, anywhere in the country. Uh, there'll be some that probably are as good, but there won't be a better one. And there certainly won't be one in such an inner city area surrounded by so many kids that, that, that we can help. So from a footballing sense, it's already helping recruitment, it's helping retention. 
everybody that's involved in our academy can see the excellent groups we've got down through the age groups. The under 23s, I think, are getting used to the level. Cat One has been just a fantastic, in it, just in its own right, just to create the facilities so you can get into Cat One because the games are more competitive, the players are better. There aren't any easy-ish games. And, and you can see from our under 23s, found it quite hard at the beginning. But Sean's really, you know, and, and the lads have really sort of started to turn that round. Um, obviously, having one or two first teamers every now and again does help. And the under 18s have, you know, have really taken to it like a, like a duck to water. In, and, and if you look at the results all the way through, you know, under 16, all the way down, you know, they've been very, very good. Of course, it's about developing talent. It isn't just about the results, but everybody likes to, to, to win. And it's good to know that you're on or, 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 or at the level. You know, I think 10 of the academy have been training with the first team this week while everybody's been on international duty. You know, I've had an hour-long conversation with Roy about kids in our academy and what ones he thinks this and he thinks that and can he develop this and can he develop that. It's just across the road, just the perfect level of remoteness, but closeness, if, if, if that makes sense, to the first team. You know, and a manager that's already brought through Aaron Wambasaka, already brought through Tyrick Mitchell, constantly having those boys able to go across the road, step up, have that moment, train with the first team, often for periods of weeks, and a manager that's engaged in that. So we don't want to put numbers or too much pressure on ourselves, but I can't believe that that facility won't help us attract, recruit, and create more talent for the first team and it will certainly help us in the community help more kids so and with certainly the academy founder members i can't wait to get them all down there show them around you talked about player retention and in in your time as chairman 18 players have come from the academy all the way through to the first team with with, with as you mentioned tyrick being the most recent new deals for Jaden, for finn and for teo this week does that reinforce your view that this is the right thing for the football club because the players are making their long-term commitments, the best players are making their long-term commitments to the club? I think people want to see progress, don't they? I think for all of the players in the first team, in the academy, if you can see progress, and for the fans, if you can see progress, it's a place that, that you want to be. So, pathway to the first team, showing the boys that there's a route to the first team. If you, if you do the work and you're diligent enough and you're good enough, you'll get to the first team because we've got a first team manager that's that, 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 and a culture that's open to that and planning that's open to that. You know, So we don't block up players. When we know we've got one in the academy for that position, we don't go and buy one that's slightly older than that that, that, that that will block them up. I think the attention that everybody's got on the academy and the successes we've had and the facilities growing are the reason that the boys want to stay and, 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 and plot their future with, with Crystal Palace. It's not that they haven't wanted to do that in the past. This football club was so drastically underinvested for 20 years that it's been a long road, really, to find the right land, to create the right resources and divert the right amount of money while we're staying in the, in the Premier League to do that. So I think everybody's excited about it that's involved in it, and you can see that from, from, from the players that are signing professional forms. We want the right balance when players sign professional forms of excited for them, but it's another step on the journey, you know, it isn't the journey. But there are players as well that we've still got hopes for, for like Luke Dreyer, who's long-term injured, really still have hopes for Luke. You know, he's had a really unfortunate period of injuries with, with, with ACL. So three or four or five players, and, and in the under-18s, maybe even more, I wouldn't want to block any of those guys. You know, they're all talented, all the guys I watch at under-18 level, and some in the 23s as well. So the, the future looks good. But everybody needs to do the work to get that last step and, and try and get more players into the first team. Let's talk about the main stand project. It's been a few years since the plans were unveiled, but there's been more progress in, in recent weeks. With the bigger picture of club finances and economic uncertainty, where are we at with the main stand project? So we agreed to Section 106 with the Council, which is all of the infrastructure that we need, we need to contribute to around the stadium. The, the biggest stumbling block right now is, is trying to... We need a small slither of land from Sainsbury's. When I first looked at the club, say, when, actually, at the time, one of the reasons that, that, that I kind of got more interested was Sainsbury's were basically saying they would build us a stadium. And then that became, well, we, we, we might contribute towards a stand. And that's now become, well, if you want the car park, you've got to give us millions and millions of pounds and you've got to rebuild our car park. So, you know, they're a commercial organisation. We understand that. But I think what they're asking for is ridiculous. And at the moment, they're blocking the project, basically. It's fundamentally a ransom strip, and they're, and they're holding us to ransom. So I hope that we can get somewhere uh, negotiating with them. 
I think what they're asking for is ridiculous, especially in the light of all the previous conversations we had with them. A better stadium will only enhance their store. There's a little element of retail in the new stadium that will bring only more footfall. You know, we've always had a good relationship with them on match days and, 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 and made the whole thing made the whole thing work. And we accept that we have to spend some money, give them some money for, for, for the small bit of land that we need. But we think what they're asking for is, is, is crazy. So we're looking at other avenues with the council and, and, and really how we approach it. Obviously, we know this would be, after the academy, this would be the next step change for the football club. And, and we're committed to doing it. It's just we have to stay in the division, build the squad, create assets in the squad, build the academy, and then focus on that. This summer was your t- marked your 10 years as, as chairman of the club. Lots happened in the last six months, but like, how do you reflect on that decade in charge? Very, very positively. I mean, obviously, it's, it's had its ups and downs, but I think if somebody had said the day I walked through the door that this is where we would be, we probably would have settled for it. I would definitely be my own worst critic and wish back on some things and, and, and think, I wish I hadn't done that and we, we, we should have done this. Of course I do. But nevertheless, I think we've got to be fairly happy with where we are. We, 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 what we've got now are the challenges that a lot of clubs like us have when we've been in the Premier League this, this long, where you've got to transition the squad slightly over a period. You've got quite a big wage bill because that naturally grows. You've got infrastructure projects that, that you're working on. So there are as many challenges now in many ways as there were when I first arrived. But if when I first arrived we were 10% of what we could be, maybe now we're 40% of what we could be. That's, that's, that's how I judge it. Obviously one day we want to try and be near 100% of, of, of what we could be. But there's a lot of work to be done to get there. What, what, what's really good, I think, about this club and the supporters that we have and the, and the support that we get and the understanding. You know, they've been through so much pain two administrations and going back as we were, James, looking at the, 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 the footage of, of, of then for the, the documentary we shouldn't talk about, but we, we, we might touch on, which, which will be a treat. Looking back as we did on that footage, I think the, the supporters really, they want slow and steady. They understand that, that, that this club's tried to get places very quickly in the past and, and, and suffered as a, as a consequence. We all like it to go quicker at times, of course we would. But I think we're on, a, we're on a good track and as long as we can keep doing the things we're doing and keep moving the club forwards in the way that we are, then maybe in another 10 years we'll be nearer to that 100%.